good morning. Welcome to the MT for Christ 247 podcast. I'm MT Clark, and this little Zoom meeting is uh, more than a Zoom meeting. It's a, it's a Bible study, and it's a little program that we produce that's called Bible Study with the Sincatis, as we're joined today by Arthur and Susanna Sincati, and my uh, lovely wife, Tammy Lynn Clark, as we uh, jump into the Bible study that Arthur uh, wrote up. Um, he submitted the, uh, the study this morning, and the, the title is is celebrate and so uh we will be celebrating uh, another day going through god's word but before that we'll say good morning and good morning. Um, ask arthur good morning. to say good morning too <laughs> yes good morning everyone it's a joy to be here mm. and uh just like to open by um uh engaging with god uh in prayer lord we we uh thank you for this beautiful morning mm grateful uh, to be awakened once again to a new day uh, that you created in eternity past and to step out in, into it. It's a joy to engage with your word first thing in the morning and to uh, um, uh, see you in, in the midst of it all, experience you, Lord. I pray that you would open the eyes of our hearts now to give us a deeper, richer uh, fuller understanding of, of uh, what you would say and uh, convey to us uh, for our nourishment, for our, our spiritual food and drink. And Lord, we we praise you and, and thank you for your design and your creation. The manner in which you do these things is, is just so glorious. Uh, and I ask now, uh, by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord God, that you would... Uh, have your liberty here today to conduct this uh, Bible study because we're studying about you, Lord, mm. and we want to know you more intimately, more more perfectly, more completely. We thank you that this is the desire of your heart to reveal yourself to us. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So uh, today's mm. study is on the, the subject of uh, celebration, mm. and our opening verse is from Psalm 135, verse 3, uh, which says, Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Celebrate his uh, lovely name with music. Um, I had to run to the NLT for that because mm -hmm. the, the word celebrate is a crazy word out there. It's mm -hmm. translated so many ways and in so many manners that uh, uh, to engage it, uh, I had to do some uh, back handsprings. <laughs> uh, sometimes it's uh, uh, um, translated uh, observe, uh, mm -hmm. for instance. But I, I really wanted to pull out the essence of, uh, of celebrate because I, I feel that a celebration is something that has been lost in our culture. Mm -hmm. The real um, art and essence of celebration is something that's been lost in our culture culture i wrote is just a brief little prolegomena here to say uh remember that word that was a pastor chris word yep. prolegomena, right mm -hmm. uh that uh yes. there are, are, are two manners made available to us by uh by god by which we may temporarily repeal uh the effects of the curse one is rest and the other one is celebration in our culture today rest has almost been vilified and celebration has been badly dis uh, uh, destroyed. Joe, I just want to camp on that one sentence, brother. I mean, that's... <laughs> yeah. I knew I was going to get I you. Mean, you know... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, whoa. I mean, that's sort of, um, you know, prescriptive, yeah. if you will. I mean, wow. Um, just in case anyone didn't hear it, um, there are two manners made available to us by God, which we may temporarily repeal the effects of the curse. One is rest and one, the other is celebration. So, yeah. Good. Yeah. I like it. Uh, highly, I, I would say very quotable. Um, yeah, we're off to a good you know. start, right? <laughs> That's and it. Um, you, you, you just engage with anybody nowadays, and the first question out of their mouth is, are you busy? Uh, and I don't know what, where that became a virtue. Uh, we live, of course, in America and and much of this is based on the Protestant work ethic, that it, it's noble and good to be engaged. It's noble and good to be 
to be working and doing and building and running and going. Right. Uh, but um, uh, it's really, you know, uh, when it comes down to it. We we've heard the expression that an idle uh, uh, idle hands are the devil's workshop. Idle hands are the devil's workshop. Exactly. But um, right. But this, yeah, I love that because the effects of the curse. You would think of you know you know it's very poetic the way you put it, and people might might it might go right over people's heads there. But it's like you know the struggle of your life. Um, you yeah. know that's the effects of the curse, uh, the performance oh, based yeah. mentality. And so you're offering up in that one sentence, you're offering up you know basically the the solution to the the problem. Um, you know, obviously <laughs> it's all in the context of being in Christ, but. We, yeah. uh, we need to rest and we need to celebrate or praise or live in joy. And, uh, you know, it's, it's all in there, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but yeah. And so that's why I jumped at it. Me. I'm like, Hey, that's, that's good stuff. You know, so. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. To celebrate has been uh, redefined as the party, right? Yeah. So that's, that's the new definition there. Party, get drunk, you know, they, they get in there. It goes, it's corrupted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could have a celebration. They're like, oh boy, right. Um, and uh, it's taken on the complexion of a, uh, just an opportunity to gratify the flesh in, in whatever way, shape, or form we can we can think of. And we keep up com coming up with new ways, but they all kind of fold back on the same old ones, right? Hmm. And um, and I I fear that we've as a culture, um hopefully not as a Christian culture, but as a, as, as a, in the world culture, we've lost the art, um, the, the beautiful art of celebration. Yeah. And so that's uh, one of the things we want to uh, unpack and look at and talk about today. And uh, a couple of things to say, uh, personal uh, notes is to say in advance is that um, I'm grateful to Susanna and our family for celebration if it were up to me i would be i would defect to that just plow through you know uh, oh it's today's christmas oh that's great uh i'll just work half a day today or something crazy like that mm -hmm. uh, but, it's, true. Um, it's true and susanna always made our celebrations rich whether they were birthdays mm. or uh holidays um that she would uh uh, introduce the, some of the elements that we're going to talk about mm. and make them uh, beautiful and memorable and, and wonderful. And so life is intended to be celebrated. It, it's, it's a good thing. And um, uh, pa uh, Pastor Finn used to say, there's, there's, well, there's a, a powerful dynamic to celebration. And Pastor Finn used to say that uh, what you fail to celebrate will move away from you. Yeah. And that can apply to people and relationships. You yeah, know, yeah. it can uh, apply to uh, uh, many different aspects of life. So uh, I got engaged with celebration in my heart and my mind's eye in, in two unusual places. Uh, first of all, uh, as a kid going to Catholic church, right? Mm -hmm. Uh of course, nobody brought a Bible to, to Catholic Church because that was a total waste of time. <laughs> what would you want to do something crazy like that for, right? <laughs> but um, the church provides what is called a, a missal, which mm -hmm. I, I have to do a word study on that someday, why they call it a missal, but, uh, mm -hmm. or a missalette, where the, the readings and, and all the engagements are, are right. It's in the pew right there, and you open it up to... The particular oh, Sunday, yeah, oh, it's the, kind of the liturgy, story. yeah. Liturgy, you open it up to that particular study, and it and it tells the responsorial sounds when the congregation is supposed to speak, and when the priest speaks, and when you sit, when you stand, and when you kneel, and all that, and the the prayers. And the thing that struck me is very, very, very interesting. And I'm telling you, I'm a kid, and and this is dawning on me. It says wherever. You know, the congregation speaks, it, it just says the people or, or something of that nature. But when the priest speaks, it says celebrant. Mm. It says celebrant. And I'm, I'm reading that and I'm saying to myself, uh, uh, I'm saying, oh, this is a celebration. <laughs> and, and of course, huh. I, I thought kind of sarcastically, yeah, again, even as a kid, happy. 
it, yeah, nobody seems very happy, and it doesn't really seem like a celebration. It doesn't mm -hmm. seem like much of a celebration. Yeah. But um, it dawned on me that our gathering together, this was supposed to be a, a celebration. And so a little bit of that, much of that really depends on your own attitude and how you approach it. But it was my first realization that this is God's design mm -hmm. that we come together and celebrate his goodness and his majesty. And um, the other place where I kind of engaged it was uh, years ago, we used to go out to uh, a, a group to hang out with a group, kind of a cultish group. Um, you know, there's some of the theology. Yeah, you know. Hey, we we've been, I, you know, yeah, we you might have been, been, been. You might have walked through stuff like that, you know. Uh, yeah. Well, they were very inviting. And we okay. didn't buy all their theology and stuff like that. But they were a, a, a Christian community called the 12 tribes. And they were into going back to the uh, Jewish traditions. Yep. They all, everybody took a Hebrew name. And they celebrated uh, on the Shabbat. Uh, the uh, And the Friday night before was a time of coming together that they called celebration. And we were always invited to that. We, and we'd go maybe once or twice a month periodically because we had some friends that were, were part of this community or we developed some friends that were part of this community. And this celebration was actually a celebration. It was beautiful. Mm. Uh, we share a meal together as a whole community and uh, then make our way up to an upper room and uh, and genuinely enjoy one another's company. There was music, there was dancing, there was uh, all the elements of celebration and they called it celebration. And so mm -hmm. once again, to me, the the understanding became more manifest and, and, and deeper and richer that this is what God in, in, intends for us to celebrate his goodness and, and to, in, you know, the first confession in the Westminster uh, uh, confession is, you know, what is the purpose of life to uh, to uh, glorify God and to enjoy him forever. Right. I, I think you could, you know, you, you we'll could insert him. the word celebrate in, in, in there instead of just enjoy. And I think the other piece to it was um, that I always thought was very wonderful was that, Friday night was their celebration, and they had all the, the goings on. But Saturday, which was their Sabbath, mm. that was it. There was no work. Yeah. There was no cooking. You know, whatever. It's kind of like the Passover. You know how they, they, you, you, many of the Jewish folk prepare the day before. Mm. Yeah. Because yeah. um, you don't cook on on your Sabbath. You don't do any of this. That would be work. And we've been, you know, kind of looking at this issue of rest with the, the Greater Foundations yeah. program that we're working with. And that's a hard thing. Right. You know, uh, even we were asked, you know, what do you do for rest? And I was like, I usually don't. I mean, yeah. <laughs> if I'm sitting down for too long, I just feel awful. I feel like I should be up doing something. I need to go clean something. I need to go, you know, move something. I need to go do something. Just sitting around is, is very debilitating for me. Because the concept of rest is just foreign to the American pop, you know, the, the American population. It's just, it's just not, yeah, like you said, that that work ethic issue. Yeah, and so part of this was instigated by a session that we had with our coach, uh, Tom Griffith, and anybody can engage with Tom through GreaterFormations.com. Uh, highly recommended. He's a terrific guy and. He's available as a Christian coach, and we had a Zoom. We have a Zoom meeting every Thursday night with a group, mm -hmm. and, and um, uh, his study uh, this last uh, Thursday night was on on rest and, and a having a Sabbath rest. So that's the other poll, but uh, I, I'm not going to steal Tom's thunder, and I'm going to defect to this this notion of celebration. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think celebration and rest. That's true. I've, I actually forgot about that. You know how the twelve tribes that they they shut down. They they know. Saturday was a day of rest. It was, mm -hmm. it was a genuine, actual day of rest. And sometimes in the church, and we were discussing this. Sometimes mm -hmm. in the church, Sunday is exhausting. Yeah, I remember back. Especially you know when uh, Rock Solid Church was running two services, yeah. and the leadership was all, was typically expected to be at both services. And you would be maybe teaching Sunday school at one and then, you know, helping a, helping a cafe and uh, 
Uh, and you know, there's a myriad of jobs and things. So, and, and then there were home groups on Sundays. So uh, Sunday could be exhausting. You needed a rest from your rest yeah. um, uh, our, or a vacation from your vacation. Our church has three services and they have teams yes. for prayer ministry, parking right. ministry. It's, it's right. a whole thing. Um, yeah. You know, basically where it's, um, it's really a machine. Um, it's it's right. insane. Um, and I, I've heard volunteers uh, in the various groups who yep. serve one, two, three services, um, you know, admit to, you know, it's sort of insane, um, you know, in yep. terms of, you know, the day they come to, you know, you know, really uh, Sunday is our, our Sabbath for us as Christians, as, as Christ was uh, raised uh, on the first day. And that's, what yes. we, that's how we, you know, change the script uh, on that as Christians. But, uh, you know, to, it's, it's awesome to serve in the house of the Lord, but um, yeah. Uh, pray those people get the best you know yeah not in, inappropriate to do that because yeah. paul tells us that some one honors the day mm -hmm. right another per, uh, unto the lord and that's the just, person doesn't honor the day that's, as that's, unto the lord and so we have freedom in, in, in and that that's right. what we point to because they're they're yeah. your traditions your your churches your whatever your groups of people do ever but paul paul puts it straight in terms Very clear. of you know basically one day is as good as another and yeah it's a matter of how you relate to the lord so yes but the lord requires us to both celebrate him and to have that sabbath rest and yeah. Like, yeah. Any of you, i don't know if Barthes is going to pick this up but it you might know, not be the Old Testament, it might not be a Sunday. Right. it might not be a saturday you know right um, so really right. Have to, we have the liberty, have we have the liberty to not even be, you know, locked down to a Sunday, you know, so. Right, right. Um, you know, the truth is that, so we do have freedom. Yeah. Our rest is in Christ and we celebrate him. It is a, a, an issue of attitude and we should be celebrating him 24-7 uh, as we're going yeah. to see. But the truth of the matter is if we don't cordon off, because God knowing our, our characteristic and our frame, because he. Uh, continue uh, he, he created us if we didn't cordon off and designate a specific time to do that we wouldn't do it you right. know it, it's just that's just the truth i i think uh mm -hmm. i think in it, there's a, a verse i didn't get a chance to look it up but there's a verse in amos that says um you can't god is actually indicting the children of israel where he says you can't wait for the sabbath to be over so that you right. can to buy and sell again and so know? i mean it's really a you know a spiritual and mental health issue that the lord puts it on is. us because if we were to do seven days at a time we would wear down physically mentally and you know or Absolutely. relationally you know we'd be on each other's backs and and so he he, he wants us to know peace by uh by yeah. commanding us to to rest you know and, yes i agree i agree and, and to celebrate and of course doing this i couldn't help but think that and recall how uh mark ministry that you're involved in with celebrate freedom yep. is you know that's a reason to celebrate that's uh, it hey, we're not yeah. resting on at uh, celebrate freedom we're we're just celebrating the victory that we yeah. have and yeah i ask yeah. people to you know because as we go along uh week to week right. whatever, you might you know sort of get tired of your freedom or or just sort of the <laughs> guy yeah, got used to your victory or whatever. And I said, like, no, this is very significant. You need to remind yourself yes. what the Lord has done in your life on yeah. a daily basis, because you'll always have something to be grateful for and right. um, to realize that God has worked, worked in your life and he's continuing to work in your life every day, every 24-hour yeah. uh, period, you get to count as another day of victory. And that's something to celebrate. Yes. And so yeah. when I have people check in, I have them check in because we want to know how um each person is personally doing and sometimes you know these check-ins can take a while <laughs> um, <laughs> give them the time to speak to be heard yeah. you know to validate what's going on in their lives um yeah and that's important and to keep it as real as they want but i i say because i know what chaos we can have in our lives um i i point to the fact that i want you to say you tell me something good something you're thankful for right. um right. you report how you've been um, that way it sort of, you know, 
uh, tethers it back to the the positive and joyful aspects of our lives which we which are there at all times it's just we take for granted and like we forget about and when we're not focusing on what we're what we could be celebrating we're looking at all the problems and everything that right isn't exactly. right. yeah perfect. and you know it can be a problem and as you said earlier um the things we don't celebrate we you know they move away from us and you know, yeah. how much is that true in human relationships as you, you fail to take you take someone for granted and fail to appreciate them they look elsewhere to someone else to uh to to fill that role and you know it calls it causes division and strife and absolutely you know, yeah, right absolutely so we have yeah. to appreciate one another i appreciate you <laughs> as the best smile and that's something you know we should <laughs> every day you know basically celebrating one another in our lives you know yes and, you know and i think that that's important also in our prayer life i don't know if ours is going to get involved in that part but how many times does it say in the bible to come to the lord with praise and, and worship and thanksgiving yeah enter the courts with praise and worship and thanksgiving and how many times do we come to prayer and just, oh, Lord, this is bad and that is bad and fix mm. this and fix that. Sure. Rather than coming and saying, thank you, Lord. You, I'm alive. Thank you, Lord. Today was great. Thank you, Lord. I accomplished things. Thank you, Lord. You helped me. Thank you. You know, and celebrate him even sure. in our prayer life. Sure. When when we come into the tabernacle, we come through the gates of praise right. first into the court of uh, thanksgiving. And so uh, that should be a model of prayer uh, instead of just bringing our laundry list of complaints and, and why life is so miserable and I need healing for this and I need uh, deliverance from that. And I need, I need, I need, I need, I, and he has you know provided everything that pertains to life and godliness mm -hmm. for us. So uh, oftentimes it's a matter of us just engaging with it and celebrating, you know, the, what, what is the good stuff that is going on. Yeah. Um, so if if we we said that we I think we all agreed that if if we didn't designate the times and places we probably just wouldn't do it. And That's true. God knowing this cordoned off seven feasts in Leviticus 23 right. that He gave to the children of Israel through Moses uh, for them to celebrate as a nation. Uh, the, the list. Uh, uh, that the Lord commanded the children of Israel to observe or celebrate. And they were the Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, Pentecost, trumpets, Day of Atonement, and uh, the Feast of Tabernacles. And the feasts can be divided into two categories, mm -hmm. the spring feasts and, and the autumn feasts, feasts and further have um, great messianic significance. Mm -hmm. The first four feasts, the spring feasts, are fulfilled in Christ's first coming. Mm -hmm. and the three autumn feasts will be fulfilled at his second coming. You know, that's cool that you you found that information because that yeah. you never think about those kinds of things. I, I found a great article uh, on uh, the, the Internet last night as I was studying this from uh, the, the uh, what is the URL was uh, JesusPlusNothing.com. Uh, great uh, study on, on the seven feasts. Mm. And how each each of those points to Christ, right? And the categories that I, I just uh, described uh, of His first coming and His, his second coming, and he, how each feast, uh, um, you know, really colors that in and, mm -hmm. and does it, it, it points to Christ. Imagine that, because the the whole New Old Testament points to Christ, and the feasts particularly, and how much more, you know, yeah. having been. Being on one side of it, should we celebrate the Lord's coming? And we do. We're going to talk about that. Yeah. yeah. In the spring feast, you know, just to give it, you know, uh, from what I can recall from my uh, Feast of Israel's uh, Bible uh, college education, uh, basically the uh, the Passover and the unleavened bread, uh, you know, point yeah. to Christ's, uh, you know, um, death and resurrection. First future, first fruits is resurrection. Whole, uh, yep. Pentecost is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit's. Yes. Um, and as you say, um, tr trumpets, I believe, is, um, you know, associated with the rapture. The uh, rapture. Yeah. That's right. You're doing good. And, You're doing really good. And, uh, uh, the of atonement and, is... and basically Day of Atonement, um, obviously, is uh, Christ suffering and dying for our, our, our sins. You know, he's Well, that's uh, the second coming. That's judgment. 
that Day of Atonement is going to be the Great White Throne. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great White Throne judgment. All right, future yeah. and Tabernacles is when we go yeah. into his yeah. kingdom, or living with God forever in His yeah, kingdom. Yeah, they becoming the kingdom. There you in. go. Yeah. So. So, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, God's not happenstance about <laughs> the way he does things mm. uh this is very carefully designed and beautifully designed and and we have opportunity to uh walk in it these there are uh, what i drew uh, just in my own thinking three essential elements that are typical uh, typical aspects related to uh feasting or celebration and they are a community a break from routine and rejoicing yeah. So those uh, are uh, three of the, the things that we're going to focus on today. Yeah. And, as, and much as, um, you know, as much as Billy Idol liked to dance by himself, you really should have a community when you celebrate. Yeah, you, you know, so. the only party that nobody shows up for is a pity party, right? right. Oh, it's well, you, you know, Pat, I got it. I got it. You said it. You said it. <laughs> it's like you hit this phrase. I got it. It's a bot. You just, you just, you just unlocked a, a Pastor Bob Costello story. Like <laughs> he said, the the only people that come to the a pity the pity party is you and Satan. Yeah, and, and right. uh, that's the only people at a pity party until you call Jesus in there and he flips over the table and tells them to get out of there. Yeah. So ah, right. yes. that's yes. a pity party. You and you and you and Satan until uh, Jesus turns the tables literally over. Hallelujah. I like that. <clears throat> Thank I you, Pastor Bob. Pastor Bob. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Celebration is always enriched by community. You know, nobody wants to throw a party. and Nobody, nobody show up? Oh, boy. And uh, I can't help but think, uh, echoing of the old Beatles song, you know, Father McKenzie uh, uh, mm -hmm. writing words of a sermon that no one will hear. What a, what a tragedy that is. Uh, mm -hmm. That's so uh, uh, pathetic and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, to to prepare, uh, Jesus uh, said, you know, he with, in in the parable of, of of the wedding feast. You know, he says, I've I've prepared my feast, and those who were invited didn't want to come. Imagine that. This is crazy talk, right? But uh, those who were invited to the celebration didn't want to come, so he sent the, his his stewards and his servants out into the highways and byways and compelled people to come. Because, because there was room and this and there is there's still room everybody there's yeah. room in the banquet hall yeah. and uh um so before the door closes you know the invitation is out there and mm -hmm. and um so leviticus 23 uh calls this a holy convocation speak to the children of israel and say to them the feast of the uh, the feasts of the lord which you shall proclaim to be holy convoc convocations convocations can also be translated assembly. Mm -hmm. And um, I couldn't help but thinking, though it's a, it's a different word, but I think the, um, uh, the essence is, is the same uh, yeah. of in Psalm 133. Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in, in unity. Mm -hmm. So um, this is a good thing. This is fun. This is joy. This is uh, celebration. Mm -hmm. uh, unity in this case uh, that we is that we've come together to celebrate we, we came together with one purpose a united purpose to celebrate mm -hmm. we're going to celebrate and uh so the more the merrier the more people that that show up uh it is just an effervescence there's a, a power an ele a, a electricity kind of happening when people show up and the celebration gets going yeah. uh, your hands up brother <laughs> Hands up! There's always one guy who's the life of the party, you know, and you've seen probably in movies and stuff you know, like the party is a real downer until so and so shows up, and then he gets things going, right? You know, uh, the my, smart. At my new church, my new church is big, and yeah. and there's a lot of people there. Sure. Uh, so when I worship the Lord in song and praise, I have a tendency to raise my hands. 
but I've taken on, you know, basically I've gotten in the habit of closing my eyes when I do so. So I don't look around to see all the people who are not raising their hands I uh, because I am in full celebration mode and I'm not going to let yeah. anyone discourage that. And, um, you know, basically, uh, cause it's, it's basically, although we're there corporately, uh, the, the aspect of celebration really is individual, um, you know, basically as yeah. the Lord is working through the worship team, through the assembly of everyone together and brought together a celebration to touch your heart. And you can encourage one another uh, in your worship. Um, but it's it's highly personal. And um, right. But it is awesome when you get together and you see other people celebrating like you're celebrating, you know, celebrating. Yeah. So it's- well, It's uh, funny when, when you say that, uh, Mark, because I, my mother, you know, we were raised in a denominational church and not to say that our celebrations in the, the denominational church were, were terrible, but they were, they were happy. They were good. They were yeah. good. Right. So every time yeah. mother would come up and join us or we would be go down and visit with them and they would join us at, at one of the um, Pentecostal churches that we would attend. My mother would say, oh, I like going to your church. It's a happy church. Yeah, we go to the happy <laughs> the church. happy church. Yeah, and and it's true. I mean, you know, as people come in and and observe other people right. celebrating and being happy, I do have one little story that when we first went to the Assembly of God's Church, yeah, oh yeah, my, and, yeah. in in the Hudson in, uh, City area. Um, first of all, I had been working for a program that I was doing an an awake overnight service for you know for our, our co-work program so that so i hadn't slept the whole saturday mm -hmm. and now i'm coming to church arthur wants to take me to this new church that he's found mm -hmm. and i'm like okay <laughs> so it's sunday morning i haven't slept i'm a little i'm a little on edge we come into this church <clears throat> and it is a full-blown pentecostal rocking church uh -huh. and i'm like looking around going what on earth have we done why has he brought me here so we slide into this pew next to this beautiful little couple, sweet, sweet, sweet couple, Dave and B, and B has a tambourine. Oh yeah, right. And several other people in the church have tambourines. Mm -hmm. And yeah. she is jumping up and down and just banging that tambourine and singing yeah. and and everybody's singing. And I'm like going, oh my. like that picture, you know, that painting. Right. Yeah, and I think it's great. <laughs> are you kidding me what and i look at him like have you lost your mind <laughs> oh my goodness i, I went I to go home and put my head on the pillow and try to pretend that this didn't right. happen yeah, yeah no, but I, we I, were loving that church and we ended up serving at that church for many many years and um, i think i went to your church um i i, I was searching for churches after i yeah. been born again and uh found that church in Stottville um, yep, right. <laughs> yeah. um, and walked in and and it was a lively worship service to say the same. There were some people sure. you know, on their knees and crying and, you know, right. Putting and hollering and, and carrying on. And, and it was like, Whoa. And, and so it was new, new for me and my, and I, I brought my son with me um, and uh we were worshiping and everything, and then there just seemed to be no break in it. After after an hour of worship, um, right. they sort of took a break, and I was like, "Okay, that was weird. I guess they're done." Because I was used to the Catholic liturgy, of, yeah. <laughs> and that was it. And uh, and and I was like, "We're we're out of here. Like, yeah, we're not staying any longer than an hour." But it was uh, it was quite the experience. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and everyone has their own way of worshiping. So right. it was it's very uh festive and very well, was, my capacity for worship was only an hour at that time. <laughs> at um, that yeah. time. It at still that isn't time. much better, but you know, uh, <laughs> but well uh, um I'll say that uh uh Pastor Finn had another expression or saying where he said you have to have structure, but it has to be dismantable right. and a uh, collapsible thing, right. you know. Mm -hmm. And he's talking about the, the, the tabernacle, mm. which different from the temple, you know, the tabernacle broke down. And when the when the pillar of fire was on the move, uh, the children of Israel were on the move. Mm. And so 
there is structure. You know, there is yeah. a, a liturgical church has a liturgy so that there is unity and everybody's doing the same thing. But there's also that engagement, that personal engagement, where if, you know, if someone hears from the Holy Spirit or if someone has an emotional rush or somebody wants to... Right. Uh, uh, raise their hands or dance or swing from the chandeliers, whatever it is, we should have freedom to be able yeah. to express ourselves and not freedom to a point of being disruptive or distraction. Yeah. There should be uh, decency and order, as mm -hmm. Paul talks about, but uh, at the same time, uh, buttressed with freedom. Uh, we uh, this is and, and this is God's design. It's a beautiful tapestry. I think of it as like a, a jazz concert, you know, where like one guy breaks out in a riff. And uh, I'm not a big musician, but I, you know, I, I think that's that. And somehow it all pulls together, you know, somehow it, it, it all pulls together. Um, so the next thing on, on our list in the study was a break from the routine. Mm -hmm. And Leviticus 23, 8 says, you shall do no customary work on it. As a matter of fact, it, it, it says that uh, that's not the first use of that term in Leviticus 23. Uh, and he, he, the Lord says that about each of the feasts. So there's a departure from, uh, from work. We know that work is, is, is part of the creative, created order. God gave Adam work to perform. In Genesis, it was not uh, as though man should be a slave to creation, but to to tend and keep it. Genesis two fifteen, and even have dominion over it. In Genesis one twenty six, but because of man's disobedience, God's uh, God cursed the ground and said, "In toil you you shall eat of it the days of your life." And in this regard, I, I, I believe, and this is you know one of the uh, uh, main themes of the of, of the study today is mm. in this regard celebration is a repeal or at least a relief or a temporary relief relief from the curse mm. it's a glimpse into how we were intended to live mm. you know uh it, it's it, it's a sample it's a taste um taste and see that the lord is good right uh and and so that we can at least be revived and revitalized that when we have to go back to tending the ground which is which in, in toil we're going to reap of its of, of its fruit but when we have to go back to that where where we still have that wooing we still have that calling in our hearts we still have that that echoing in our in our soul that um this is hard but this is not a forever and and this is not the way it was intended to be Mm. And there's, you know, there's, there's something better on, on, on the horizon. Mm. So this was the intention of, of uh, celebration, I think, in God's design to woo us back to the garden, to woo us back to the place where, where he intended uh, uh, things uh, to um, uh, work in, in, in his perfect created order. Mm. And so I, I jotted in a note there from Colossians uh, uh, 2, 16 and 17. It says, uh, let no one judge you in food or drink or in regard to festival or new moon or Sabbaths. Okay? This, is the, this is the new yeah. covenant, right? Which are shadows of things to come, but cr uh, the substance is of Christ. So these feasts, uh, the seven feasts uh, in the Old Testament, and there were other feasts that were added along the way, the Feast of Purim, uh, uh, for instance, uh, Hanukkah, you know, it came into... Uh, being during the uh, um, uh, Maccabean. Maccabean Wars. Uh, there were other feasts that came along, but they were shadows of, of, again, the way God's creative order was intended and the restoration of that coming, you know, in, in the second coming and in the uh, 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 kingdom era. Yeah, Jesus so, changed everything, uh, you know? Yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So this breaking from the routine is is uh, big, is really big. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, Mark shared with us a work story before we opened, a pretty dramatic work story that he was engaged with this week. And he he really <laughs> needs a break from the routine today. Yes. <laughs> he needs to some people are just, you just can't satisfy some people. <laughs> like, like, I... I 
this is a ah, okay, horrible, we don't horrible analogy, and I hope the Lord forgives me. I know what Jesus feels like because he did all these miracles and people still didn't believe. And yeah. I did everything I could to satisfy this one customer, showed him the thing was working, and still he didn't understand and wasn't satisfied to, to, to serve. Um, so I can understand uh, the Lord's frustrations with us. Um, yeah. that we fail to understand and fail to believe um, the work that he's done for us, you know, so. Yes, exactly. So, uh, the last thing here is rejoicing and, uh, each feast was marked with specific offerings and practices, which included food preparations and particular attitudes or, or, or focuses, uh, on the seventh feast, the feast of tabernacles, Leviticus 23, 40 says, and you shall take for yourselves on the first day, uh, the fruit of the beautiful trees, branches or palm branches and the boughs of leafy trees and willows of the brook and you shall rejoice before the lord your god for seven days um when god throws a party it, it's you know it, this yeah, seven this, days so, oh, boy. involved and, and he's not he's not just messing around mm. we know that um you know even in um in uh the first century uh, when Jesus walked among us, we have the the wedding at the Cana, at Cana of Galilee. Uh, Jewish weddings were a week long celebration, uh, really genuinely festive, and uh, uh, with all those elements—a departure from the routine and, and um, uh, everything that uh, composed the uh, and and these seven feasts were were spread out over time. We know that. The, the Passover often involved uh, uh, people making a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, you know, mm -hmm. to um, offer a lamb uh, as a sacrifice. And, and there were uh, uh, you know. ordinances and structure and things of that sort. But um, it was also uh, very collapsible, too. Yeah, the, the Lord ordains these these festivals and, and feasts to go over several days, and uh, the, the Satan comes in with a counterfeit and comes up with a county fair. Uh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So, did you guys go this year? Did you go to the fair? I, I did not, but Tammy Lynn serves faithfully oh. at the fair uh, every yeah. year. Um, basically for Operation Adopt a Soldier, and uh, and oh, went, nice. that's, uh, that's the Washington County, and then she went to yeah. Atticoke County to enjoy the festival of the season, you know, end of summer, right. and you know, all back to school stuff. That's your tradition. Um, right. oh, we, we, we enjoy uh, the fair, and some people don't, but, you know, um, right there, and, and, and in the, um, you know, before modern times, there was the, they had um, uh I forget what it was called, but it was like Carnival or whatever, where they had these, uh, like these, these, it was like a, a dispensation where you could, you know, live it up and go to the, go to this fair drink and be sort of crazy and corrupt and, you know, um, and, and, you know, it was like that was accepted. It was uh, right. sort of a Mardi Gras type of... Uh, I was going to say, it makes me think of Mardi Gras. Mm -hmm. is yeah. before, you know, before Ash Wednesday, you had Mardi Gras. And, uh, well, just... yeah. and this is the corruption of, uh, right. of how I opened in the beginning to say that celebration has been distorted and, and, and corrupted by the world system, by Satan. Everything... Uh, in Satan's order is a cheap imitation. It's junk food compared to the the the, the, uh, the real meat feast. And, and the real feast that God mm -hmm. uh, in, in, intends for us. So, so rejoicing is marked with uh, special foods, with uh, music and dancing, and and re rejoicing. And we see that in, in the feasts, with exception uh, of of the, the the feast of of atonement. In the scripture, where it says the Lord says um, uh, that uh, uh, for uh, you shall uh, do no work on that same day. This is verse 28. Um, make atonement uh, before for you before the Lord your God. Um, and oh, it says uh, above that it shall be a, a whole a holy convocation for you. You shall afflict your soul and offer an offering made by fire to the lord mm -hmm. so it's a the day of atonement is a special time set set apart 
where you should um, uh, uh, really reflect and, and uh, afflict your soul and, and consider and consider repent. your ways and, and the repent. Time of yeah, the time yeah. of repentance. Mm. Um, in the new covenant, again, you know, we're not obligated. We're not under the law. Yep. We're not obligated to keep the the seven feasts, uh, in spite of what twelve tribes, right? <laughs> I might say, um, uh, but um, uh, to uh, but uh, uh, but since we have been redeemed from the bondage of sin, which brings forth death. Ours is a higher calling. Paul writes in Philippians 4.4, 4, he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Yeah. Um, so now this is not an excuse that to say, well, you know, I, I experienced Christ by the riverbed. You know, uh, uh, I don't have to go to church kind of thing. Uh, this is not a departure because remember, the first element in, in our study was community. Mm -hmm. Right. It's much richer and more festive when there's when there's people uh, engaged in, in unity. So um, but ours is a continual rejoicing. We always have something to rejoice about because we've been redeemed. You mm -hmm. know, the, the curse was bondage. Um, it, it, Tom uh, Griffith pointed out that uh, on, in the study on rest, there, there was no there's no rest in bondage. Right. You know, there was no rest in in uh, in Egypt. Egypt was a twenty four seven hour job. Yeah. It was um uh, it was a it was a it was a bondage. That you had taskmasters. You were afflicted. Um, it, this was not a party. Okay. So there was no rest there. But um, we have opportunity to celebrate Christ because. You know, we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. He's with us always. He's promised never to leave us or forsake us. Mm -hmm. And we can have our own little Pentecostal party wherever we are, whenever we want. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's powerful. Our gathering together or assembling is, is expressed in Hebrews 10.25, which says, Do not neglect the assembling of yourself together, as some are in the habit of doing, but all the more as the day approaches. Uh, our ga uh, a gathering together it is a celebration of God's goodness and the freedom and victory that we enjoy in Christ. Amen. And this is, you know, this is something to celebrate when when there was when when the conquering uh, emperor or or Caesar, you know, came in, came back to Rome with the the spoils uh, in procession. It, that was a celebration. <laughs> the people were partying. That was a great time to realize that things are good, and and we we had a we have a victory going on here, mm -hmm. and 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 this is a this is a good thing. Um, some liturgical churches still practice the processional. Yeah, um, the Catholic Church particularly, the priest comes down, you know, enters from the narthex and comes down the the main aisle to the apse, and it, there's a, a structure of it all and it is a processional and um uh you know at least that was something that was a glimpse of something uh, you knew point, something was going to happen right and my, uh, uh i remember in the past uh, episcopal church service um, right uh, having having them come down the aisle and everyone in the entire church got in line and basically followed the cross around as we as we celebrated uh easter or something uh yeah basically yeah, yeah. To, yeah to uh to, you know basically in a in a parade uh right. around the aisles of the church and uh it was it was it was it was cool man <laughs> uh, now, yeah one, one of the most festive memories for for me was uh years ago we had a strong interfaith uh community mm -hmm. And uh, we would have um, uh, on Martin Luther King Day would have a, a special worship service, usually at, at Shiloh Baptist Church, which was our local uh, uh, black uh, Baptist church in, in Hudson. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the Shiloh choir was just raw. They were just wonderful and they were just uh, uh, celebrating. They, they were rocking. And it would be a, a processional uh, come down as the choir is singing down the, the main 
aisle and uh, all the clergy would be in, in, in procession. They would come in, in their traditional robes. And, uh, and of course, one of the funniest things was uh, that... Uh, and we don't mean to be rude. No, we don't, don't mean to be rude at all. But, but Rabbi Fried had rhythm issues. <laughs> trying to clap and 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 walk and walk and, 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 and yeah, he loved it. He but loved he loved it. it and he participated and he tried. You know, there's <laughs> eight work for effort, dude. Really, it was. Uh, but it was a very festive time, and you just felt the electricity in, in, in the air. And this processional was all all part of it. You know, these are all the trappings and and, and elements of celebration. Um, our sacred meal. Is the body and blood of Christ, right? Which we do in in symbolic form, and our opportunity is 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 made for us to depart from our fa daily fare and to enjoy the blessings as we were intended to, and one day will, uh, more completely and perfectly in glory. Mm -hmm. So this is all um, a, a, a pointing to, you know, our uh, to eternity and our intended purpose. To celebrate God and, and and Christ and the Holy Spirit, to celebrate uh, uh, all that uh, uh, He's He has has done for us and all that He is, mm -hmm. so that we would in, we're going to enjoy Him forever, and that 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 enjoy has some uh, joy in it. Joy <laughs> is in it. Yeah. The joy of the Lord is is our strength, and. Um, uh, we uh, have uh, that's you know that that is uh, that's our uh, God's intention for us to 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 draw us out. I think I said in last week's study uh, that when we see Christians that are just down to the dumps in the molly grubs, constantly, constantly morose and complaining, um, you know, it's not my place to judge, but. I think you should really ask yourself uh, and get circumspect um, about the uh, integrity of, of your conversion and your relationship with Christ, because this this should bring us great joy. And it, it, it is a, indeed a, a celebration. Hmm. Amen. So any closing thoughts on that? We're going to have opportunity to celebrate today. In a yeah, while. absolutely. Uh, I, I liked uh, Ephesians 5, um, basically, where, where it tells us to be filled with the Spirit um, uh, in, in verse 18. And then 19 says, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Yes. I love that. And making melody in your heart to the Lord and giving thanks always for the things, uh, all things, to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. And thanks for... Uh, I didn't uh, no, really right. camp on any of the uh, of the, the those things, but music is a huge huge piece to this uh, equation, and we know that David danced before the Lord right. as he's bringing the ark into Jerusalem, and this was a great day of celebration where there was special food, where you know David said everyone shall have a cake of figs and, and dates, and, and special food was handed out and things of that sort. So, you know. I think it's also you know and. Old Testament, you have where the, the, the singing goes out before a battle. Yeah. yeah. That, you know, celebrate, it's almost like celebrating before the battles even happen because sure. we go back to, we go up to the, the New Testament where it says we are more than conquerors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We are in Christ Jesus. So celebrate, I mean, even if you do, and we're not saying that people don't have sorrow in their lives or don't right. have issues. Of course not. You know, we have our own. You know, last Sunday I was celebrating and singing, and then all of a sudden I got hit with a wave of, ah. Oh. But then I just celebrated through it, you know, because we do have those uprises and falls. But in a battle, yeah, it seems to me that if you go in singing, you're you're going to realize that you really are more than a conqueror. You know, I, indeed. I'm glad you brought that up, Susanna, because um, uh, you know, I noticed uh, basically. When I get into negative states of thinking or, you know, selfish thoughts or whatever, if I have worship music on, you know, I can I can switch to worship and suddenly all that stuff goes away. Um, yes. Guys in our group, Scott, <laughs> uh, 
reminded us all that basically you can't think two things at once. <laughs> and <laughs> so if we're, you know, thinking about ourselves being, you know, offended or, or, or bothered or not being taken care of or whatever, that, that's the focus of our thoughts. We're going to be in that mess. But if, uh, you know, worship is there. It reminds yeah. us to be thankful for the Lord, even in this, in the midst of all these things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it really, I've discovered that it has, uh, you know, really uh, a great effect to, to change your thoughts, um, you know, basically or a shift, you know, basically your focus to, to God mm -hmm. uh, again. And uh, on occasion, I've, I've found that, you know, just subtly, you know, to be, because one thing we do when we, um, when we run into the troubles, we we shut down relationally. Uh, we go into silence. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. And when you s open up that dialogue to worship, even if you're singing just lightly along with it, suddenly things will change because mm -hmm. you be, you know, the I agree. And and you just open up and you release. You stop buttoning down and you let it out. You know, uh, <laughs> only, uh, Perry Stone used to say, when you when you sing, you know, you open up your mouth and the Holy Spirit, you know, comes is allowed to come out and it rolls away the stone and, you know, the yeah. Holy Spirit comes out. It's a very poetic way of saying something, you know, that, you know, there's a lot of truth in that, you know, in fact, that, you know, the, the joy of the Lord can come out in song and change the atmosphere, quite frankly. Yeah. And, uh, yes. Yeah. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, um, there was an old saying that went, uh, you know, when you sing, you pray twice. Yeah. Uh, right. So music is a is a huge yeah. element and, and, and piece to this, this puzzle <laughs> of celebration and a gift from God. Indeed, uh, yeah. a, a beautiful uh, component. Uh, and and um, I, I remember. Uh, one apologist used to say uh, about um, uh, Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde was a dark, you know, atheist. He's a great writer and poet and, and novelist, but a pretty dark character. Mm. And um, on his deathbed, he he called for a priest, Anglican priest. And um, there was no, I remember this guy saying there was no singing at his funeral. There was no music at his funeral. Um, you know, when, when darkness uh, seeps in, silence uh, often uh, creeps in too. And this is, can be the dark night of the soul uh, that is uh, very, very oppressive. This is again where we need community. We need one another. I, 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 in my oikos, as Arthur says recently, some tragedy or some you know trauma has come into people's lives um, that are close to me, and I suffered similar traumas in the past. And um, they are you know people are concerned with their mental health um, uh, because mm. you know because their pain and loss is so great. That people are like going, wow, they need they need to see somebody, they need treatment or whatever. And um, I I weighed in. I was like, no, this is trauma. They're they're hurting, and this is they don't know how to cope, and this is what they're doing. They're yeah. doing things that are you know, you know what what they experience is a major major break from what they're used to. Something that's shaken their foundations, and yeah. they don't they don't they haven't followed the Lord. They don't know how to cope in the spirit. And this is what the world has taught them. The people get um, drunk or, you know, angry or do or, act, act out erratically because they don't have the, the foundation of peace that the Lord gives us. And, right. you know, the processing of trauma, you know, through, through our faith is uh, significantly different than what the world would teach you to do. Yes. Uh, yeah. And so, you know, you never stop celebrating because that builds your capacity to take on the the traumas that come your way. Um, yes, right. Yeah, that's good. Your capacity, you know, when you don't have that foundation of capacity and joy, your your bucket fills up quick with the stresses of this world. And sure, sure. when you have a small cup 
uh, it's going to overflow and spill out in all kinds of unexpected ways. Um, basically, you know, no one ever pressed your buttons before <laughs> you insulated yourself and never had these bad things happen to you. And mm-hmm. then it's, you know, the sky is falling because something happens uh, that you, right. and you don't know how right. to deal with it and you don't have the capacity to absorb it, you know, so, or to but you know, I just want to give it to the Lord. Right, flip side, which is the gifts of the Lord. How many times have you gone, you know, Oscar Wilde's didn't have any music, it was a, a terrible funeral, but how many times have you gone to the funeral of a, a, a Christian? Right. And yeah. the celebration is but, huge. Yeah. The huge celebration. We had one of my dear friends, her husband passed. Um, a couple, a couple, no, uh, no, Brenda, Brenda, Brenda. Yeah. Uh, Adrian's dad. Yeah. And um, he was a wonderful Christian man. He was great because she's a great Christian. And the church was full of people, and there was music and singing and stories about how he made yeah. people, you know, joy filled, and and how he spoke about the Lord and. And you, you didn't go away from that funeral sad. You went away from it going, that was a celebration. Yeah. That was a celebration. And when I when I pass, I'm, I'm going to put it in my will somewhere that <laughs> says, there's to be no sad music. We're not going to have any of this. Blah. People are going to be happy and joyful, and I'm going to heaven, and that's where it should be. That's right. So, that's you know, it's a celebration. It's a celebration. Well, nobody's passing anytime soon. Oh, not soon. anytime soon. <laughs> I'm just right. saying. You know. Well, this has been this has been a joy. Yes. Uh, yeah. Anytime we gather together around God's word, it's there's an element of celebration to that. And uh, uh, Mark, I'll, I'll ask you to pray for us as uh-huh. we uh, move move on to the to the rest of our day of rest and celebration. Celebration, exactly. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you uh, for. Bring us together so we could find our rest in you and celebrate um, your goodness, Lord, uh, for all that you do and uh, all you've revealed to us in your word and, and through our lives, um, Lord, that we, we've we seen that you're faithful and good and you never leave us or forsake us. And even in the midst of troubles, we can celebrate your presence with us. And Lord, so we, we pray for you to stay with us today and we pray for you to go out into the world and to bless your church uh, by anointing the pastors to speak your word and to anointing the worship teams to lift people up uh, in community and in joy um, to give honor to your name and to give you the glory. Lord, uh, we just pray for you to go before us today. Uh, lead us in the things you would have us do and open our eyes to, to the wonderful things uh, that you provided us with. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. And we love you. And we pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Right. Well, that was a celebration for sure. Uh-huh. Yeah. And um, I can't wait to celebrate today at church. And uh, for anybody who wanted to join us for other studies, we have a whole archive of them going back to 2021 on our podcast and our YouTube channel. Um, we're very content and humbled by the fact that um the followers increase and um, the viewing hours increase on youtube um i just uh, humbled by the whole thing um and we 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 appreciate anyone clicking and and tuning in to to any of the things we produce um and uh we thank you and uh mm-hmm. that said uh we wish everybody to have a great day and yes god bless you all God bless.